Good evening and welcome to this holiday service of remembrance. Normally, we would have you all here with us to celebrate and remember the life lived of your loved ones. But there is nothing normal about 2020. You are all here because we all share a common bond. Not only have we all experienced the stresses of 2020, but you all have experienced the loss of a loved one near and dear to you. It may have been a spouse, a child, sibling, parent, or other relative and even friends. As we gather tonight in this unconventional or what some may call the new normal, we hope you find some comfort in the words you hear from tonight and know you are not alone in this journey. Good evening and welcome to the annual Christmas of Remembrance service that is being offered by Tramp Kabor Board, Molten Bell. We uh, welcome you tonight and we understand this is a little bit of a different format than in past years, but we want to extend a very warm welcome to you, even though we can't meet in person tonight. We do trust that this will be a time that is comforting for you and for your family during this difficult time. And so we welcome you tonight to our service and hope that this is a comfort for each one of you. That has certainly been our prayer in the past several weeks. The first reading is the Gospel of St. Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The second reading, Christmas trees in heaven. I began to string the tinsel across the branches of the tree, and remembered all the Christmases when you were here with me. Are there Christmas trees in heaven? I really need to know. Does an angel sit atop the tree, and is there any snow? The house just seems so quiet. Christmas music brings me to tears. But I know that you're in heaven, and these days turn into years. One day we will be together. It is always meant to be, together up in heaven, for all eternity. Good evening. We gather tonight with mixed emotions as we gather tonight for this memorial service, which we come together for. And this year, of course, is a time where we celebrate Christmas, but it's going to be a little bit more reserved this year for several reasons. First of all, as you know, there is a uh, COVID-19 pandemic going on outside, and I know that that's been difficult on each one of you, and that makes things difficult as you go through a grieving process, having lost a loved one this year. But we have prayed that tonight would be of comfort for you as you join us for this service. And I wanted to talk to you tonight a little bit about some of the things that have offered me comfort in my times of grief, especially at Christmas time. As I said, I know this is a difficult time for you, especially around the holiday season. We remember our loved ones and we do grieve their loss as a result of being apart from them for the first time during the Christmas season. And so I wanted to just share with you a little bit tonight about some of the things that have offered me comfort in the past several years during my times of loss. Just kind of talk to you that way tonight. And so as we gather here tonight, I wanted to share with you how I've gained strength over the past several years by focusing on the eternal promises of God in His Word. You know, the Christmas season is a time where we're reminded of perhaps the most central message to the Christian 
reason for celebrating the season, and that is that God came near. God is sufficient, of course, to meet all of our needs in life. As the Apostle Paul stated, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We too can gain strength in our loss this year and in this difficult time of COVID by focusing on the Lord and expressing our faith and our confidence in Him. One of the greatest symbols of Christmas is that of the star. You'll see that on many Christmas trees and perhaps you have it on your own tree in the home. The star, of course, was God's way of saying to the world so many years ago, I am here and I'm here for you. Those that followed the star 2,000 years ago were called wise men in God's eyes. And as we remember our departed loved ones this Christmas season, I hope that we can gain comfort from the three stars of Christmas, which we're going to examine together tonight. The first of these stars we'll call the star of love. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we're told, really, in its shortest form, the reason for the whole Christmas season. We're reminded that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We see here, as I said, the reason for the star and the manger and the baby. The whole Christmas narrative is all about God sending his son into the world in the form of a baby in a manger. And just as God sent his love to us 2,000 years ago, he sends his love to us tonight as well. The prophet Isaiah, in foretelling the birth of the baby Jesus, gave this baby a name. He called him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the Christmas story reminds of us first and foremost of the fact that we're not alone in this life. We're not alone in our circumstances, that God, in fact, is with us. And he offers us the comfort of his loving presence. This we see evidenced in the star of love. He joins us where we are in the midst of our sorrow. But he offers us something which we find in the second star of Christmas, which we'll call the star of joy. Why do we call it joy? Well, I think it's important to remember the old Christmas carol, perhaps the most famous of all Christmas carols, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Of course, we're reminded of the fact that the baby in the manger grew up. And he said these words to his followers. He said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall receive comfort. That word blessed literally means happy in the original language. What do we get from that? Well, Hopefully tonight we understand that in the midst of our sorrow, God has promised us his comfort and his presence if we turn our eyes to him. And while we may be saddened by the loss of our loved one, God's presence strengthens us and cheers us and guides us and comforts us. He is the source of our comfort and strength at any time in life, but especially in times such as loss. The star of joy is what God promises to us, even in the midst of our sorrow, where he comes alongside of us and ministers to each one of our needs and offers us his peace and comfort during our most difficult time. And this leads us, thirdly, to 
what we'll call the Star of Peace tonight. The Christmas narrative tells us that Jesus brought peace on earth. We see in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, this is what is told to us. And I'm reminded of a passage in the ministry of the Lord of a day when he was in a boat with his disciples in the Sea of Galilee, and a storm came up upon them, as was very common on that sea amongst sailing vessels of the day. When the disciples cried out as this storm came against the boat and they cried out in agony and they approached Jesus whom they found to be sound asleep at the time. And they woke him and they said, don't you care if we drown? We're told that Jesus woke up out of his sleep upon hearing the concerns of his beloved disciples he said three words he said peace be still the storm was quieted we're told and it wasn't just as though the storm storm stopped the storm and the waters of the sea, which were so violent just a few minutes before, were completely peaceful, not a ripple upon the water. The storm was quieted. I guess this really says all that I wanted to leave you with tonight. And that is, in the storms of life, and we've seen plenty of storms in the year 2020 together. In a life, in a world full of problems that can touch us at any given time, it's always a comforting thought to remember that we are not alone in this life. God is, in fact, in the boat with us. He joined us through Christmas. And he's here tonight. And the good news is, he will not let us drown. It's my prayer for you, that you, in the midst of all the tumult and the trials and the difficulties of this year, and in the sorrow that you feel over your loved one's loss, that the peace that the Lord gives, his peace, will strengthen you in this Christmas season, and that he'll keep you in his comforting care. May God bless each and every one of you, and may his peace be yours this holiday season. My first Christmas in heaven. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world below with tiny lights like heaven stars reflecting on the snow. The sight is so spectacular, please wipe away that tear, for I am spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I hear the many Christmas songs that people hold so dear, but the sounds of music can't compare with the Christmas choir up here. I have no words to tell you the joy their voices bring, for it is beyond description to hear the angels sing. I know how much you miss me, I see the pain inside your heart, but I am not so far away, we really aren't apart. So be happy for me, dear ones, you know I hold you dear, and be glad I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I send you each a special gift from my heavenly home above. I send you each a memory of my undying love. After all, 
Love is a gift more precious than pure gold. It was always most important in the stories that Jesus told. Please love and keep each other, as my Father said to do, for I can't count the blessings or love he has for each of you. So have a Merry Christmas and wipe away that tear. Remember, I am spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. At this time, as we remember your loved ones together, would you please join me in observing a moment of silence together? Thank you.
If you would allow me to conclude our evening together in prayer, let me offer a Christmas holiday of remembrance blessing for us as we depart. Heavenly Father, we are grateful tonight for this time of year in which we're reminded that we're not alone in this thing called life. We are thankful for the fact that you have entered into the world to join us. We thank you for the promise that you'll join us in our sorrow and care for us during our darkest times. And I pray tonight that you might just help each one to remember that they're not alone during this time. Please give them the ability to turn their eyes and their hearts to you. And I pray, Lord, that you would meet them where they are tonight. Please offer them your grace, your peace, your comfort, your strength, the courage to carry on, and the joy that comes from knowing that you're near to them. Please keep them in your care now and offer your richest blessing upon them. These things we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. As we conclude this holiday service of remembrance this evening, I would like to thank you all for tuning in and joining us in prayer and remembrance. I would especially like to thank Pastor Rich Andrews for his words of encouragement and hope, and to everyone who has participated in tonight's service. Again, we hope you found some comfort through this service, especially in these trying times. But with that, we would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a safe holiday season. God bless and good night.